the edge of Guilt City, a former postmaster fears for his friends, and all await the arrival of the Night Post. No, it's a horrifying skelter spirit, and I've come to eat your secrets in your sleep. You're not very stealthy for a skelter spirit. Do you always wake up your potential victims? What are you, a spirit expert? Mm, not yet, but maybe someday. Scoot over. You're a bed hog. That makes you a cruel bed invader and sleep disturber. What if I was having a distressing vision of the destruction of Guilt City and all of its citizens? You're still having those weird dreams? <sighs> I've never stopped having those weird dreams. It keeps me on my toes, you know. Like having a coworker jump into your bed in the middle of the... Mm, what time is it anyway? It's afternoonish. I know I said you're welcome whenever, but you could startle someone breaking into their house and jumping them before they open their eyes. I hardly had to break in. You're out in the boonies, but you still don't lock your door? What's the point? I figure if someone wants to go through the trouble... They might as well be able to kill me in my sleep with relative ease. Then why do you care so much about being woken up if you're prepared to get murdered? Did you have a reason for dropping by, or are we just... What? Doing what we always do. I don't know what you mean. You're literally in my bed. Yeah, and how many nights have you crashed at my apartment? I guess that's kind of what I'm talking about. We're always together. Because of work and everything else, but we never... Miss Clementine, are you asking why we haven't fucked yet? Val, you're so crude. That's definitely not what I meant. Well, hold on to your panties, because your attitude might change when I tell you my news. I reserve my right to kick you on the floor. And don't say panties. Why don't you say less in general? You're so rude. You want to hear what I have to say, because I have news. Actually, Good fucking news. And I had to tell you first. Good news? That sounds unlikely. Do you feel like anything has changed since our dearest postmaster retired? At first, it felt the same to me, but last night after my shift, I just had this gut feeling that I couldn't ignore. You've got to watch your caffeine intake. Look who woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Will you listen? Will you move? Your elbow is stabbing me. There. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? This is my bed! You don't have concerns about bed sharing equally when you're at my apartment. You're a good-for-nothing blanket hog. Okay, quit fussing, and tell me your good news, if you actually have any. You're so pessimistic. Or is that your prophetic dreams talking? Okay, okay, I know what that look means. I know you don't have as much experience with trying to escape our beloved Guild City landscape as I do, but while we're tethered to the post, we're trapped. We can't get much further than the outskirts of the postal routes. Val, this setup is making me nervous. What did you do? I had a feeling. Something told me that with the postmaster position vacated, we at Station 103 might have some increased flexibility that we might not have otherwise. What kind of increased flexibility? Last night, after my route, I kept driving. I drove until I almost ran out of gas. I'd never gotten that far before. But I couldn't leave without telling you and Milo. And you're sure? I wouldn't joke about this. I barely made it back. Fumes in the tank and I stopped here first. We have a chance to leave. To get the fuck out of here before they replace our postmaster. We have no idea when that will be, so we have to hurry. Wait, I'm not following you. Are you suggesting we try to leave? To run away from the mess we're in? Yes, obviously. We don't have to stay entangled in all this supernatural, fatalistic bullshit. The three of us could get out of here together, start a new life, raise sheep and knit wool sweaters. We could do whatever we fucking want to do. You're suggesting we leave and become farmers? Or international jewel thieves or radio show hosts. Haven't you ever imagined your life outside of the night post? Outside of Guild City? We finally have a chance, and we need to hurry. Hold on. Slow down. I need to think. What's there to think about? 
Why would you want to stay? I don't. I... I just feel a sense of responsibility. We are obviously entangled in things. What if we have a purpose to fulfill? What if there's a reason that you, Milo, and I can't avoid trouble? Are you suggesting we have some kind of destiny to realize? Because fuck that. I can't offer you proof. It's something I've been thinking about. Especially since, you know. How can our involvement be some cosmic sign? We're just three assholes stuck in a shitty situation. We keep getting twisted up in shit because there's no other way out. Now there is, but there isn't enough time to lie around and discuss it. You're the one who climbed in bed with me. I'm excited. I thought you would be too. I can't believe it's that simple. How can we leave everything behind? It could be simple if you let it be. Clementine, you know, I care about you. Of course I do. I care about you too. I know you do, but I'm talking about beyond our connection through the post. Oh. Uh, oh. Come on. You can't be completely oblivious. I thought at least some of your who me doe eyes was an act. When you said you didn't date other Night Post employees, you weren't talking abstractly or trying to subtly let me down. You were confessing? We've been through a lot together. I don't know how I would have gotten through all of it without you. Oh my god. You know, I never told anyone this, but I chose the name Valencia because it was a wish. Somewhere new, halfway across the world where everything's different and no one has ever heard of the Skelter. Where the land isn't riddled with judgmental bones. I don't even know anything about Spain, and I just want to get out. And leave everything behind? What future do we have here? What future do any of us have once our names get drawn? If we have a chance to leave together, I don't know why we wouldn't go. I suppose you're right. We don't owe the Night Post anything, and if you found some kind of cosmic loophole, we should try to take it. Yes, that's what I hoped you'd say. Come on, get up. We don't have time to waste. <laughs> no, I guess we don't. Okay, so what's your plan? Get Milo and get out. We'll take one of our vans and call it part of our severance package. Mm, what about Daffodil? Oh, Clem. If we get out of this alive, I'll get you six horses and a field to keep them in. It's not like she's yours anyway. I know, but still. Okay, if you want to steal your male horse, why not? But you've got to do it quickly. Why not ride off into the sunset on horseback? Isn't that more romantic than a stinky old van? And what, Milo will ride in the sidecar? A van is more practical for skelter travel. What if Daffodil got stuck in a haunted bog or something? You're awfully excited to break our tether to Guilt City for someone who believes there's even more hostile landscapes ahead of us. I'd be happy to leave the post if it meant walking into the mouth of a giant gator or an active volcano. What should I bring? Whatever you want. Think fast. I want to be back on the road before sundown. Do you expect that Milo will come with us? I hope so. He doesn't have much keeping him here. I can't imagine he wants to stick around at the night post until he meets a fate worse than death. When you talk to him, try to take a subtler approach. With everything he's processing, this is a big decision. Hardly. This ought to be the easiest decision any of us has ever made. It's still his to make. Right. But at least we have a choice for once. We always have choices, don't we? Usually our options are pretty shitty. I'm just happy to have a hopeful road ahead of us. We'll see how long that- Oh! Let's meet at the station before sundown. I'll bring Milo, hopefully, and snacks definitely. And don't be late. Dearest? No. No, that doesn't sound right. What about... Hmm, no. That would make her throw up. My love? Oh, God, I don't think we're there yet. Oh, why does this feel so awkward? Right like you were talking, Clementine. Don't make it weird. Even if it is. 
to Val. Always Val. When my time at Station 103 began, I thought you hated me. Through a mask of grief, my whole world seemed gray and unfriendly. But I knew something about you was special. Being attractive and keeping everyone at a knife's edge distance makes you seem intimidating. But I suppose you already knew that. But I was desperate for connection with anyone. And even though I knew it would take time to ingratiate myself with my senior colleague, I never imagined we'd become this close. You deserve a more poetic, beautiful, and articulate confession of my affections for you. You'd think that after all of my practice writing sappy love letters, my writing would have somewhat improved. But I'm afraid that this letter will be clumsy and insufficient. Carefully guarding my feelings, even from myself, didn't stop them from existing. I feel like my conscription taught me how to deny myself, even from imagining possibilities. And it is easier when the person tells you point blank that they don't want to go out with you. I want to go with you. To drive off into the sunset, discover what else is out there beyond the reach of the Guilt City lights on the horizon. I was prepared to pack up, disappear into the night, and forget about as much of this place as I could. But I couldn't shake feeling like, I know you're going to think this is ridiculous, but... I feel like I have some responsibility to stay. Something terrible is going to happen. Whether it's with the bird watchers or the governor or the stranger's mysterious machinations, I should be here to help in the aftermath. I can't predict exactly what's coming, but I know it's going to be devastating. I can't abandon the place I thought I'd spend my whole life in service to, not without feeling selfish. If there's a reason for my father's death, for my conscription to the post, I think that staying at Station 103 and preparing for whatever's coming might be a part of it. You're smart enough not to make yourself a martyr to a system that stole years from you. And maybe if I was braver, bolder, I wouldn't have changed my mind about following you into the great unknown. I know you'll be pissed, and that you will think I'm stupid for staying. I don't expect to be able to explain myself in a way that you'll understand, but I hope that you can trust that I'm doing what I think is right. Try to forgive me. Write to me if you can. Sincerely yours, Clementine. We've been riding around in circles, haven't we? It's too late to express your dissent now. We're kind of in the middle of it. Don't worry. I'm sure you're not alone in thinking this is a stupid idea. You're looking awfully lost, Miss Keys. You have a knack for dramatic entrances. Though it is strange how you're willing to appear when someone's looking for you. I go anywhere an interesting bargain might be found. That is why you're here, ain't it? Mm, not exactly. Maybe. I need strings pulled, and you've proven yourself to be quite a reliable puppet master. And you're the puppet asking to dance, then. <laughs> you're a curious one. You wanted Postmaster Best gone, and now there is a vacancy. I want to be the person who fills it. Postmaster Keys, huh? Think your daddy would be proud? This isn't about what my father would have wanted. It's about what I want. I would have expected you to know enough about the night post to want to avoid a position like Postmaster. You're either more ambitious or more foolish than I expected. I imagine that having a postmaster owe you a favor would benefit you. Why not help me and have another piece on your cosmic chessboard? You ain't my first choice, but every smart gambler has a side bet. <sighs> wonder where Clementine is. She's usually the first one here. Fuck. She's not coming. Wait, how do you know? 
She wrote me a letter. What do you mean she wrote you a letter? When did you get a letter? Call it a hunch. Maybe she just stopped inside the station and we missed her. Should we check before we take off? No, she's not coming. I don't know who's more of an idiot, Clementine or me. Is something wrong? I thought Clementine would have jumped at an opportunity to consummate your flirtationship. Is that what you're calling it? I feel like something has to be wrong. Why wouldn't she join us? Why do you think? She's in love with the night post and nothing is more important to her. That doesn't seem accurate. Or fair. She must have been here tonight. Milo, doesn't something seem different? Different how? Looks like the same chipped brick and pulsating fluorescence to me. No, something has changed. I can feel it. We're feeling a lot of things today. Are you sure you just aren't anxious about leaving? Uh, Skelter to Val. I think I know where she went. Maybe we can still catch her. You get away from her! Clementine, what are you doing? Val, I... I thought you left. I can't leave if there's a new postmaster, can I? You were supposed to be long gone by now. And you were supposed to be with me. I'm sorry. Just get in and we'll go now. I can't. My place is here, as Station 103's postmaster. Clem, no. You can't be postmaster. This is the best choice for all of us. I've already arranged it. Arranged it? With him? They can't promote you. They don't control the post. But... but we agreed. (laughs) Well, I don't recall promising anything in the particular. You should know by now not to trust this snake. I was trying to save you. What gives you the right? Ladies, please. Shall we see what your head honcho has to say on the matter? Now, this ain't in my language, but I'm sure one of y'all can make sense of it. No need. I know what it says. Another hunch? It was always going to be me. I see that much. My prize racehorse. Shut up. You're irrelevant now. (laughs) Like you say. I'm so sorry, Val. Look, now that we know what's holding us here, maybe... If we find Serene... No more distractions. Guilt City's fate is our fate. We have to reach the messenger. We were so close. It felt good, didn't it? That brief window of hope. I'm not glad you're both still here, but I am grateful we're all together. Yeah, can't spell dangerous without us. Clem, would you hold my hand? Wait, did you two- and you didn't tell me? This could be the end of the road. There's no time left for nerves. Gather ye wormwood while ye may. Well, good. Ashley would have been relieved. I know you two would never treat me like a third wheel. On a tricycle, the third wheel's the most important one. Is that true? I don't know. I'm just talking to fill the air. Maybe some ear-splitting punk music would distract us for a bit. Sounds perfect. Thank you for joining us on tonight's route. If you'd like to support Station 103, consider joining our Patreon for weekly bonus stories and early episode access. Or check out our Redbubble and coffee shops for night post merch and digital story collections. Send a letter to a hopeless romantic and tell them about the night post. Answers? Is that what you want? I know you have questions. I wish I could answer them. 
There are things that prevent me from granting you what you seek. Ancient orders. Beings with far more power than I have now. There was a time when such considerations would have been beneath me. That age is long past. Now I must resort to speaking through fragile little creatures. Specks of stardust and cosmic iron, puppeting them to be heard. Time grows short, and I feel my grip on this vessel growing weaker by the second. I must get this message out. Listen to the stories. There is truth hidden within the stories, should you have ear to listen. There will be more to come. Until then, seek the library. Among the Stacks is an upcoming narrative anthology podcast set in an infinite library outside of space and time, containing every instance of every story across every world. Featuring stories written by and starring some of your favorite podcasters, authors, and actors. The title of today's teaser, Things Are Getting Ready to Happen Out of Sight, comes from the poem This Moment by Ivan Boland. It starred Nigel McKeown as Redacted, it was edited by Pippin Era Major, with music by Alex Schwartz. You can find more information about the show in this feed or on our Twitter at Among Stacks, where future updates will be posted. Until then, stay tuned, stay listening, and sapere aude.